Um, great, so we'll do the introductions and then there's a few housekeeping things that we can take care of and we'll get right into the discussion. Go ahead, Stephen. Okay, so as quickly as I can, I'm Stephen Neely. Um, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I am the um, professor of Dalcro's Eurythmics at Carnegie Mellon University and all of my students are undergraduate, mostly all undergraduate university students who are required to spend 150 hours with me. And, and we have now jumped to all online. <laughs> uh, my name is Veronica Valesky. I live in Boston, Massachusetts, and um, I teach private students on flute and piano, and I teach group uh, Dalco's classes to students who are K through eight, and my private students are uh, like seven to 65. So um, I'm just going to call on people in order that they show up on my gallery view. Um, and you can go to gallery view uh, by clicking top right. There's like three, nine little squares and you can see everybody. Catherine, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, I think I'm unmuted. I'm Catherine Kay. I live on the south coast of England. I'm really close to the sea. I've just been down to see the sea. It's amazing. Everybody's kind of really far from each other. I teach piano at home and I teach Dark Coast at the Royal College of Music in London from three year olds up to about 12. Thank you, Monica. Hi, I'm Monica. I teach outside of Cleveland, Ohio, and um, I teach kindergarten through fifth grade general music and was interested in what you all had to offer today. Thank you, Christy. Hi, I'm Christy Piper and I'm from Brunswick, Ohio, and I work in the same district that Monica does and I teach K to five general music in a public school. So now I'm all online. So I'm waiting to see how we can do Dalcro's online. <laughs> Thank you, Mira. Hi, I'm Mira Larson and I live in Salt Lake City. I teach cello and I just got my Dalcro certificate last summer. Yay. So I work with a three-year-old through 18. Thank you, Adriana. Okay, so I'm Adriana Awush. I'm teaching in in uh, Boston. Uh, I teach at Lundy School of Music, uh, graduates and undergraduates Eurythmics and uh, kids classes of Eurythmics, private piano, and that's it. And seniors. Stephen, could you continue calling on people because there's people who need tech support getting in. Yeah. My own user error. Um, yes, I'm happy to do that. Beth Ann, would you introduce yourself? You could be nifty with this and mute, mute thing, haven't you? Um, I'm Beth Ann. I'm based at, has that Selma just come on? <laughs> Hi, Selma. And Ruth. Oh, oh how, this is amazing. Sorry, got distracted. I'm Beth Ann. I'm based in North Wales. I teach at the Royal Northern College of Music. Um, lecturing to undergraduates, some postgraduates, and some children's classes. Um, I'm a PhD candidate. I'm not doing much teaching at the moment because of that. And I also teach one-to-one -one violin, which is all online. And I'm loving it. Thanks. Very good. Alison? Hi, my name's Alison Wise. I live in Beverly um, in East Yorkshire in the UK. Um, and I teach on the weekend, I teach it on a scheme called Yorkshire Young Musicians. So working with young people aged eight up to um, 18, 19. So they've chosen to, to come and spend the day there and Dark Rose is one of their musicianship classes. Super, thank you so much. Leo? <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Leo Zampetta. I'm from Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, which is about 30 miles west of Philadelphia. Uh, I K to five classroom music in one building. I teach the orchestra at the high school and I teach some private cello lessons as well. And I've been studying Dow Crows with Stephen for the past year and a half. Or so. Very good. Thanks, Leo. Um, if I can just ask the newcomers to mute your microphones unless you're speaking, we'll keep the background noise to a minimum. Celia? Hi, hi. I'm Clelia. I'm Clelia. in the New York area. Hi. Thanks. I'm. I think we met uh, a while ago at Carnegie Mellon, maybe 15 years ago in the days yep. of uh, yeah. Annabelle Joseph and Martha. Yes, uh, I good. teach uh, private piano 
and um, I teach in a private school. I am the only music teacher. I teach K through eight. Super. It's nice Thank to see you, everybody. Nice to see you. Uh, Kristen? Hi, everybody. I'm Kristen Turner. I'm in the Boston area. I teach uh, elementary music with the Dow Coast curriculum, grade five, as well as I'm an elementary band director for the district. Great to see everybody. Thank you. Uh, oh, things just shuffled on me. Monica, one second. Um, Josh? Hi, my name is Josh. <clears throat> um, I am a graduate student uh, right now at the University of Kentucky in Lexington, uh, Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, I've had experience uh, teaching elementary general music uh, mainly, but I've also taught middle school and high school general music. Um, I am currently job hunting and seeking uh, more Dow Crows training. Super. Um, Sonia? Hi, everyone. I'm Sonia. Um, I mainly teach undergrad and graduate level arithmics at the Cleveland Institute of Music. I also teach uh, private piano and arithmics classes. And I'm also a music minister at a Catholic church uh, locally in Cleveland. Nice to see everyone. Wonderful. Um, is it Laurel? Laurel Ben? Hi, I'm Laura, um, and I teach in a private school very young kids, from young toddlers through six years old. And I just joined because I saw that this morning you were doing this, and it seemed like really an interesting thought. We are obviously going to be going online, but I'm not sure. We're on spring break right now, so I don't know really exactly what the plans are, but I'm sure it will be useful. Very good. Thank you, Laura. Laura, if you have the option of tilting your camera a little bit more toward your face, we will enjoy seeing you. Oh, is Thank that you. better? That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, uh, A-D-A-U-M is the next uh, screen name. Um, Hi, I'm Alex. Alex. And uh, I'm very curious about Del Cross music, and I'm from Boston, um, and I know about Del Cross music from Veronica, because we are housemates. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Happy to have you. Michael? Hi, I am in New York City. I teach uh, three to four-year-olds. Uh, I have a Delphi class for three to four-year-olds, first and second graders, a uh, class for third and fifth graders, class for 10th graders. I teach undergraduate year training uh, at uh, Columbia and um, sight singing at an acting school, all online. All online, making it happen. Nice to see you, Michael. Guy? Hi, my name is Guy. I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. I work right now primarily with adults, uh, music teachers, and also uh, people just generally interested in um, musicianship enrichment. I am puzzling out how the to finish the pedagogy component of my license, which is uh, the kind of the final major step in my license training. Very good. Um, Jill? Bottom left corner should be a button for mute. There you go. Hi, I'm in the North Shore area of Massachusetts and I teach early childhood. And I use Dalcros. I'm a dancer, musician who uses Dalcros um, in the early childhood world to integrate neurodevelopmental movements to help kids meet their milestones and function. Super. Thank you for doing this. Of course, thank you. Anthony? Hi, everyone. I'm Anthony Molinero. I teach uh, first through fifth grade uh, general music in a public school in, uh, in Pennsylvania. Super. And, uh, and also teach at Carnegie Mellon. Yep. Uh, Ruth? Oh, you got to unmute Ruth. It's in the bottom left corner. Thank you. Uh, Ruth Alverson. I'm right now really interested in learning how to work with classes of children, mainly young children, via the Zoom program and any, any other ways you have that are remote that are working for you. Very good. And, yeah. Thank um, you. I'll, I'll just say um, 
uh, if anybody was not in the first call, this is just the second time we've done this. If anyone was not in the first call, we have recorded, we have notes and we have the, the video recorded and there's a link that, you, um, that if you go to the Google doc that Veronica has shared in the chat, um, you can go there and play it back. And there were already a number of very nice ideas that were shared that day. Selma, so nice to see you. Hi, I'm um, not a Dalcros teacher. I'm a historian uh, who has uh, been very involved in um, learning about Dalcros teaching and teachers for a long time. I live in Toronto. I've uh, been excited about this because I, a topic that came to me a few years ago was what I began to call digital <laughs> Dalcros, namely how, how were people transferring activity onto uh, platforms like Zoom, et cetera. So this is quite exciting. I'm just sitting in, I'm not a Dalcro specialist. I always like to make that clear. Well, <laughs> I'm a dancer by background. She makes it clear, but Selma has a lot more experience than many of us, honestly. We were very happy to have you, honored to have you in the call, Selma. Um, Ashley? Hi, I'm Ashley Bodner. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm meant to be student teaching with Mr. Molinaro right now. Okay. Very good, Ashley. Um, Mari? Oh, you got to unmute, Mari. Bottom left. Hi, I'm Mari. It's me. I am um, in LA. Uh, I teach at the conference. Oh, Mari, I think that your feed did not come through well. Maybe you could type in the chat your, you know, a short introduction. Um, we, everything you said broke up there. Um, I think we'll keep moving though. Lori? Hi, I'm Lori. Um, I'm in Denver and uh, my daughter's driving right now. Um, <laughs> so we're in the car for doctor appointments, but I um, teach K through eight um, elementary school and um, I got my dog crow certificate last summer as well. Like, yeah. Wonderful and pretty impressive that your cell phone came through as clear as it did. Very nice, Lori. Um, Leo, did we already introduce? We did, didn't we? Yeah, so you were next on my... Um, Holly? Hi, I'm Holly. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. I teach arithmetics to three-year-olds through high schools, uh, high school students, and I'm also one of the teachers for the Dow Crow Summer Institute at the University of Kentucky. Super. Very nice to have you. Stephen? Hello, uh, I'm Stephen Kosnick, and I just started my Dalcros training this past summer at CMU. And I teach first through fourth grade general music in the South Hills of Pittsburgh and trying to incorporate it into my performing uh, choral work that I do on the side in addition to my teaching in school. Um, and I also like to see how it uh, can integrate into the local community um, outside of the school and professional choral setting. Super, thank you, Stephen. Um, Angela, are you there? Okay, I, I am there. Does that work? Yes, it's definitely okay. working. Can you just okay. quickly introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Angela Wright and I live in Oak Park, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. I'm a piano teacher and I have a few little classes in Eurythmics. Wonderful, so it's nice to have you. Here. Thank you. Um, Deborah, it looks like your mic is open. Can you introduce yourself? No, we can't hear you. Okay, so Deborah, maybe um, just introduce yourself in the chat window. Um, to the side, and it's very nice to have you. Um, the screen name M Sue H S U. Are you able to? There you go. Hi, Stephen and Veronica. This is Mimi from New York City. Yes, of course. Sorry, I'm multitasking now, so I'm only participating with audio. So I That's teach okay. Eurythmics and K through eight, and uh, glad to be back for a second meeting. Thank you. Wonderful to have you. Aneta. Coming, coming, coming. Can you we got you. Me? You're there. Awesome. 
Hi, uh, my name is Aneta. Uh, I teach in Brooklyn in independent uh, preschool slash elementary school. And I have my own curriculum based on the Alcross and ORF Kodai connection with lots of emphasis on arts. And I wanted just to say very private hello to Rude and to Michael. Michael, we haven't seen each other in past, what, 15 years or so, right? <laughs> Glad to be here. Thank you, everybody. Very good. And, 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 uh, we have two left here. Jane. Jane, hey. Hi, Stephen. Hi. Can you introduce, um, will you introduce yourself oh, to everybody? I'm Jane McDonald. I'm Jane McDonald from Pittsburgh. Um, I am happy to be joining in on this meeting. I've taught Eurythmics at Duquesne University City Music Center for a long time, and then I've switched to teaching Eurythmics to freshmen, uh, music ed majors, and I teach sixth, seventh, and eighth grade choir and music classes in the Blackhawk School District. Wonderful. And then I think Angela Wright might be our last one. Angela, are you there? Yes, um, I, I did it already. Oh, you did. Sorry, Angela, I see you <laughs> okay. now. It flicks back and forth. Um, then there, I see one last one that came up as a 732 phone number. Yes, that, that's me, Marlene Yenny Maitland. I'm calling from my phone. Okay. Well, welcome. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, yes, I live in New Jersey. I work in an inner city elementary school. I uh, teach K through five. Uh, we've not had any um, electronics in our room. I've never had any internet connection and learning online has been terrific. I've been able to uh, connect my students with background knowledge and uh, it's just great. That's, that's my introduction. Super, thank you so much. Um, I know that took a while to get through. There's 34 of us on this call, but it really is nice to just kind of know who we're talking with and, and to get to meet um, all the new faces. So um, welcome everyone. Uh, I'll hand over to Veronica, who I think has maybe another announcement or two, and then we'll introduce our agenda. Um, so uh, we've been doing a pretty good job of muting and unmuting. You can, if you go to gallery view, you can see everybody. Uh, and if you go to speaker view, you hear just the person who is talking. So gallery is uh, nine little squares in the top right corner and speaker is three little squares with a little rectangle underneath. Um, yeah, I think we're ready to get started. Um, maybe Stephen, could you introduce the topic for today, what we're focusing on? And then we have two presenters who are gonna talk for five minutes about their experiences and then we'll have a free for all discussion. Right, so in the first meeting, we all, um, it really was not quite a free for all, but I mean, we were all really, really, I, let me speak for myself. I was very freaked out about having to jump into a new online world and try to uh, accomplish any of the goals that we are able to do live. And so we grabbed a couple of our colleagues who we know had some experience in the online space, some of them for a number of years and, and gave them each five minutes just to kind of talk a little bit about what they've been doing um, and how they solved some of their uh, some of the hurdles that we are all up against. Um, today, uh, coming out of that, we realized that um, two ways to organize that conversation has to do with things that are pre-recorded and things that are live. Um, and so today the goal was to ask a couple colleagues to talk a little bit about pre-recorded videos, how they use them, how long they are, what they do, if we bump into the technology of how you actually arrange the screen or what apps you use or any of those sorts of things is what I assume we're going to talk a little bit about today. And so, um, so today is specifically trying to talk about pre-recorded modules. Um, and then next week, we're going to try to talk about live uh, interactions and what sorts of things we can do live and what sorts of things we can't, or what are the hurdles there. So I think that that's that plan. I got to pull up, um, unless Veronica can tell me. Yeah, so first. Sonia, if you could go first and I'll just cut you off after five minutes, not to be rude, but for the sake of time. Um, and then just to tell everybody, the plan here is to have a couple colleagues speak for five minutes, really just be keeping it short, and then we'll open it up for comment and question and try to finish pretty close to on time here at around two o'clock. Sonia? Okay, yes. Uh, Steven, can you hear me? 
Okay, great. Um, I'm going to switch my camera angle here. So uh, this is my home studio. I have uh, also, if you guys can see, I marked the range with the black dots here with the angles that cannot be included in the camera because we're using uh, Microsoft team for uh, classes at the Cleveland Institute of Music and uh, the range of the video that's being shot, it's a little bit narrower than the ones on Zoom. So that's why I marked the dots there. It's something that I found kind of helpful. Um, I'm going to share my screen really quick and just talk about the program that uh, I've been using. I know that some of my colleagues are using. And Cleve, uh, Stephen, if you would, if you can give me some feedback, because I'm still getting used to Zoom. I'm not sure if everyone can see what I'm seeing. Can yep. you see my screen? Yes, it looks very good. Okay, great. So um, here, oh, yes. Was there something else that you want to say? No, no, no. Please keep going. Okay, great. Uh, so the program that we're using at CIM is called Canvas, C-A-N-V-A-S. And uh, the feature that I found most helpful, it's called modules. And usually I categorize them by concepts that's being introduced in class. And uh, you can see that here I have cross rhythm swings, rhythmic vocabulary canons. And under those categories, if you click on each one, you will see the subcategories of practice that I made here. Some are handouts, some are audios, and I'm also planning on making video uh, demonstrations of certain concepts. And if you're teaching on a college level or if you are actually operating with quizzes and exams, I also have posted exam and quiz practice here. And you can see that there are short audio files of uh, different exercises and then I've also posted the answers here so if I click on this it's just a very short audio uh, file that is a minute and 30 seconds long and so on and so forth if I go back here and click on the answer so usually I tell people well my students to listen to the uh, recordings first write down their answers and then afterwards they can check on the answers uh, you can see that I handwritten this because I'm not really good with you know technology so I wrote it out and then uh, took a picture of it and posted on canvas same thing with performance based materials it's this is just a very neat feature um, that i've been using for a few years now and students have actually told me that they found this very helpful because they can pause certain things and go back and listen to it again using the handout that's also posted on there um, so yeah so that's the first thing organization having some categories and subcategories uh, personally i found that very helpful um, timing of uh, the recordings I usually keep it within like one to three minutes three minutes max if it's more than three minutes I often find myself over uh, fitting too many concepts at once so I try to break it into every uh, like little um, exercises so then when they go to the recording it doesn't really feel overwhelming so duration of the recordings is also something that I try to keep in mind a lot of the times and another uh, type of timing that I always remind myself is when to post the recordings whether if it's a handout audio or video recording uh, some of the times if you're introducing a concept in class and you would like the student to uh, explore that concept. You might want to wait a little bit longer to post that. Um, uh, and other times, if I'm getting ready for a quiz or an exam, um, and it's a reinforcement of something that we've already practiced during live teaching or actual in-class practice, uh, then I tend to post that uh, early on so then people get all the time they can to practice. Another nice thing about having shorter recordings is that um, I always encourage my students when they're doing other things and now they're all quarantined, they can't go anywhere. If they're doing chores in their house, they can literally just put on an earphone and listen to the recordings and multitasking and that's a nice thing to do and it's only a minute or two long usually. Um, Talking about video recordings, um, things that I have been actually thinking about, I have not really gotten into it, so I don't know how well that works, but based on teaching uh, this 
well, this morning and also part of last week, I find that range of motion is something that I have to keep in mind. Some people have a larger space like uh, mine. Uh, let me see if I can get back to Zoom. How do I get back to Zoom? Uh, There's a red stop sharing button at the top of your screen. Ah, okay, got it. Thank you, Veronica. <laughs> okay, great. Um, Yes, so uh, for some of the students, I've checked on all of their spaces at home. Some of them have a large space like this. If I'm using Canon as an example, where we're doing for freshman second semester, conducting and also stepping with the music. If they have a large space like this, they're able to go ahead and just do this amount of work within this area. If they have a narrower space, I'm, planning on asking them to just stay where they are, uh, angle the camera so they, I can see them hat to toe, and if they expand their arms out, I should be able to see the tip of their fingers on the edge of um, the video they are going to record for me, and just step where they are, but they should still be able to, uh, I should still be able to see uh, up and down uh, uh, shapes and different kind of qualities coming out, even though they are, don't really have the space to uh, walk around. Um, another thing that I also keep in mind is student with accommodation. Sometimes they injure themselves, they cannot walk. Um, so in that case, talking about Canon, I would literally just ask them to conduct in their arms. They can sing through it. Um, they can tap in another arm and then conduct with the other. So multitasking. Uh, so yes, just keep, keeping in mind with um, individualize uh, everyone's need. I think that's something. That Thank I you so about. much, Sonia. Oh, yes, that's five minutes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. That was a yep. blast of information. We love it. Uh, um, I know. Sorry. I tried to fit no, it no. in. It's condensed. great. It's great. Okay. Thank you. Um, All right. Awesome. A blast was a compliment. Anthony, <laughs> five minutes for you, please. All right. So, um, you know, different than what Sonia does, I work mostly with children. Um, I, uh, so I have two teaching settings and I'm gonna kind of talk about both. One of them is at Carnegie Mellon. I teach uh, in the preparatory school and these are children who are, you know, have paid to take a, a music lessons at Carnegie Mellon and, in, and it's a different type of situation for sure than a public school situation. In both of these, I'm being asked to do distance learning and I teach pretty much pure Dalcros in both settings. So. Uh, but they have very different problems and very different sort of capabilities. So I'm going to talk about both of them. Uh, the first thing I'll talk about is the Carnegie Mellon practice. Um, so what I've done is um, I'm also going to share my screen here if it'll work. Let's see. What do I share my screen? Is this going to work? Can you guys see that? Yep. Great. Okay. So, um, so uh, I have uh, my blog here. Um, Mr. Moe's music education blog. And so what I've done is I've created these videos. Um, for the kids at Carnegie Mellon, uh, Family Eurythmics. And so what I use is I use my own children as guinea pigs uh, to demonstrate to, and to teach a different lesson. So I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit so you can kind of see, there's my kid. And uh, let me find the, so, you know, so something like this, I might, um, oh no, that's not real, here we go. So here we go, we got conducting in two, you know, and then I'll switch to three at some point. So I share those videos with my class. Actually, you know, my, my audience is more the parents than it is the, the kids with that one, because I'm anticipating that it's the parents are kind of going to participate in that. Then I got a Google Classroom. And so I'll show you what that interface looks like. Uh, that's not it. Where's the Google Classroom? Classwork, here it is. So in the Google Classroom, you can uh, create assignments, you can share the videos. See, I shared the video here. All the, the students are here in the class, those of them that, that are engaged on the Google Classroom. And then what I like about this is then they can submit very easily to me. I can create an assignment here that says, can you post a video of your student conducting a two or three pattern and a four pattern, just like Wyoming does in the heavy light video. And so then they send them in and I can kind of review them. Here's a girl doing it. Let's see if it'll work. Uh, 
and the parents most of the time are actually sharp enough to kind of play along with the kid which is kind of nice that's not something that I have in the public school but in this setting it works good and then so that's the assignment and you know the, the children can uh, have a little eurythmics lesson and the, I also like the, the fact that the parents can educate themselves a little bit on what um, on, on what eurythmics is and uh, have a little bit of the experience with the child especially we're all stuck at home and so it's nice to have something to do constructive uh, with your child and um, so I've had some success with that and great response from the administration and the parents so far in um, in creating those videos um, you know it, uh, there has been some requests to do synchronous instruction, so to do you know live teaching, and I'm working on um, how exactly I'm going to work that out. But for now, I've just been doing this asynchronous thing where I create a video and then ask them to do a little assignment based on the video. Um, now, for the public school, it's going to be you know quite a different. Um, let me see if I can find my public school classroom on Google Classroom here. This is not it. Uh, oh, here we go. So, in the public school, it's a little bit different um, because I, I don't anticipate as much response from the parents on that. Um, and so, when I think about the, the public school teaching, I think about the way I would do it if we were physically there. The first thing I would do is, um, is attempt to uh, get the kids acclimated to the space. First, I would consider the space that we're teaching in uh, the physical space, and then I would uh, get the children, you know, comfortable in the space and have some exercises to do that. And so now I don't have a physical space; I have a digital space. So I'm thinking about it in a similar way. How can I get the children to be uh, to be comfortable? How can I set up the digital space, and how can I get the children to be comfortable both in the digital space, but also in their own physical space, which I have no control over? And so the first video series I've created is to that end. It's just getting them to explore their own physical space and getting them to gain some comfort with the digital space. And, um, and then I think from there, in a very Dalcrozian way, I should be able to build out from what, we, what kind of response I'm getting both digitally and, and from the physical space into creating, you know. Now also with the public school kids, I've been working with them mostly a long time. So they, they know, you know, there's a certain uh, shorthand and certain language that we share that they should be able to respond pretty well to. But in, until I feel, and we don't start digital instruct, we don't start distance learning with them until next week. So I don't have very much yet in, to that end. But I would encourage you to think about it in the same way that you think about the physical space. I mean, you wouldn't just send the kids into a classroom that wasn't prepared. You wouldn't start teaching lessons on the first day, at least I hope not. I think on the first day you would be thinking about the space, you would be thinking about the, the comfort, the procedures and things like that. And this is what I, I'm gonna start with, with my public school kids. What is the, you know, and then from there I can build out into a lot of different content. But um, I think starting in the same way that, uh, that I would if we were in a regular classroom is, is, is a safe bet. Um, Thank you, Anthony, I'm gonna cut you off here. Good. Thank you so much. Um, at this point, we just welcome people to ask questions or share things that they have that worked for them or didn't work for them. Um, you can either raise your hand and wave and Stephen will call on you or you can type a question into the chat box to everyone and then Stephen will kind of manage the discussion that way. Thanks, Veronica. Um, uh, just looking back on, on Sonia and uh, Anthony though, um, Sonia's uh, software called Canvas is something that a lot of the universities use. My university, I've, I'm learning all about Canvas these two weeks as well. Um, and, and I actually called up Sonia independently to get her to, to tutor me on my first couple lessons for that. Um, that's not an option for most people though, if, unless you, you know, your university or your district offers that to you. I mean, what's really great about it though, is just that it helps you organize your ideas into some sort of hierarchical digital structure. And you can do that through Google Docs, um, Anthony, I'm curious, is the Google Classroom, is that something that's freely available? So with the Google Classroom, if, you're, if your district has the, the, you know, the G Suite, 
um, then you uh, then then it's connected in your district to like all the emails um, right. for the your children. Um, if you do it in the um, if you make you can make your own Google Classroom. Anybody can, um, okay. but but you can only I think you you can't get to the children only the parents. Got it. So the yeah. So there's you know actually I will jump in on that. Um, yeah. In my school, I have K through eight students. It's a private school and the fourth grade and up have their own school email addresses through Gmail. And then my Google Classroom connects to the students directly. And then I have the option of emailing the parents as well. But for the younger kids, like they're not on the G Suite. Yeah, so I think the point that I wanna just offer is that if, you are, if you're with some bigger organization that gives you these tools, then wonderful. Um, but without them, it's is it's quite a box or you know there's multiple ways that you can sort of place files in folders and make those available to your families or to your students Even, can i say um, something really quickly yep uh, okay so uh most of us use canvas just because the school is encouraging us to do that but i know that some of my colleagues also use google drive and that you know they found a lot of success with that too and that's you know accessible for a lot of people so yeah that's it okay so um we have now a little bit of time 20 minutes or so that if uh you know we're hoping that a couple of our um attendees some of the participants maybe you have a question or a comment um to either direct to any anybody or you know just something to share so Who's got something to say? I think Cynthia typed in a question. I just want to make sure we don't miss that. Good. Well, let's start with Cynthia and then Stephen Kosnick will get you second. So Cynthia. Oh, there's Cynthia Lilly. Welcome, Cynthia. We didn't see you at the beginning. Hi, I was a little late. Yeah, what I typed in is, is can I do practically a whole class on a video? That's what I was sort of hoping for. I know asking. how to record them now. I know even how to get them on YouTube, which was a long a learning experience, <laughs> right? Uh, but but does it work? So far, the examples have been like three minutes maximum. Right. Well, um, first of all, Cynthia, can you, if you have the option, will you tilt your video camera so we can see you? And if not, that's okay. And then I think that um, different people are going to find their different solutions to that question. Um, I think that uh, some of what has been shared now by a couple people um, is that a series of small events rather than one long form class um, provides a lot of flexibility um, and allows people to sort of come in and come out as their home life would determine. Um, the, has anybody tried to do a, a long form 40 minute or 50 minute class and did it work? Christy? Um, yeah, I've been doing live streams every morning at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live and YouTube Live uh, simultaneously. And the only problem I'm running into, like they're about 30 to 45 minutes long. The only problem I'm running into is YouTube sometimes glitches on me and it'll say like you're violating copyright, it'll stop the stream. And then I've had a couple of things that like pre-recorded music that Facebook has muted out. So I find I have to move to more original things and not use any pre-recorded music and I'm having a lot of success with it. And a lot of my students are jumping on and they're commenting, hello, it's nice to see you. So it's been a great way to connect with my students. And it's very easy to upload the um, live video. In, I mean, in YouTube, you just push live, it starts recording you. Uh, you have to do it from your computer. It's, I'm not able to do it from um, my iPad or from my phone, but I've been uh, every morning, 10 o'clock, I just jump on and, and it's been really successful, so. So in that case, we're talking about a live interaction. And then are you recording those after the fact? Yeah, so then I like they just post up, I, I upload them. I have a page on Facebook that I set up for my classroom that people can, I just invite them to like or join. And then it's there that they can watch it anytime. And same with YouTube, you can put it right on afterwards as soon as the live recording is done. Right. So, so but I have a question about that because um, it seems when it's live, you're not actually getting video or audio feedback from the no, student, right? No, and you it's can awkward. just get text chat feedback. <clears throat> yep. So I'll leave space where I, I, you know, could you sing your response back or things like that. But for movement, it's I'm using a hand drum and I'm moving around. I'm finding this what I'm doing, like step the beat with me, and but I'm not able to see them. Um. Anybody? Yeah, um, Beth Ann, and then Stephen. Sorry, Stephen. Beth Ann. Sorry, I, I I just was jumping on top of um, what 
Christy was just saying. Um, and also this maybe is of interest to Selma as a historian. It, it, this conversation um, really makes me think of Heather Gell, yes. who was a pioneer Dalcro's teacher in Australia. And she would play from the studio, from the radio studio. She wouldn't see her classes, but she would imagine them because she had obviously taught a lot. But it really coloured her, um, her improvisation. And also I think what's really interesting, because I did um, a little research thing on being Heather Gell. I, I read some stuff about her and I kind of, um, maybe Alison and Catherine, you were there at that class where I um, didn't look at the class and I spoke my lesson and didn't look at their response. And it, it makes you, I was thinking Anthony about how one improvises and how one must prepare what we're gonna say for correction. So you're not correcting what you see, but you imagine in your video and the instructions that you write under your video, because I was looking at your blog presentation, which was really effective, I thought, but in there, there would be, had you thought of, you know, and these kind of open questions where we've, we're presenting a, um, a curiosity in the student. So how about trying, or even lovely high knees, are your feet pointing, you know, or whatever we want to, to improve as a teacher, because that's the, that's the thing I think that maybe can get compromised whilst we're doing online teaching is, how do we improve the quality? So it's keeping our pedagogical um, skills sharpened. So we think about the process of the teaching, of teaching of the exercise. How do I play for it? What do I want to see improve? Although you didn't see what they presented you, but you embed, you weave that into the exercise that you're placing on the video. That was just a thought that came to me as I was listening. Thank you very much, both of you, for your presentations. That was made, made, really made me think, because it's something I've never done. Right. Um, thank you, Beth Ann. Yeah, I think uh, it's really wonderful having the, the model of Heather Gell. If, for those of you who don't know, Heather taught in uh, Australia um, for many years and was really a, you know, one of our great, um, you know, great teachers of the past. Um, they, her students compiled many of her lesson plans into a I think a, a really wonderful book um, that, you know, with a spiral bind. Um, it's not inexpensive, but it is absolutely available. And, and you see these lessons where she, um, she, she presented her lessons over the radio. That was sort of one of the most famous things that she did um, for children. So she had sort of a Mr. Rogers neighborhood style um, show that was on the radio for kids all across Australia, I guess. And, uh, and she had a way to share these lessons with them um, where she couldn't see them. So that's that little bit of history. And it's, and it's wonderful, Beth Ann, to just note how that's similar to what we're doing here. Stephen? Nope, you gotta unmute. Stephen, you gotta unmute. There we go. Uh, Stephen, uh, um, sorry, I was gonna ask Anthony about your, the, uh, the Google Classroom that you'll be doing with your students at Grove City Elementary School. Um, Will you be ex like expecting the students to be responding back? And I guess some of these questions have been answered by uh, our just previous speakers about how how will you sort of interact with the students in a moment uh, or over the next couple days after that lesson to provide them feedback, provide them guidance, um, because that's it, it. Sounds like a, a for me that was the real takeaway about a, a Dalcro's teacher is responding to the student in the moment and adapting and adjusting and meeting them where they are. But if you can't make that immediate adjustment, how do you continue that growth? Well, like, you know, that's something I really have thought a lot about because it's a huge part of my teaching is being in the moment and creating it, creating these experiences and also, you know, being responsive to the student and, and all of these things. It, it, it's tremendously important to me. And, you know, so I've been trying to find ways around it. And, you know, as Beth Ann alluded to, yeah, uh, you know, you're kind of anticipating things that they might need to improve or do wrong in the video, but then also, you um, 
and then also, yeah, I, I provide them when, whenever they send me back a video, I can send them back a, a response and say, Hey, have you tried bending your knees a little bit more or maybe to maybe improve this, you know, but, but I also, I think about this sometimes like, what's really my goal here? You know, am I really going to try, am I really trying to have eurythmics right now? I mean, is it really going to be eurythmics? You know, I kind of, I'm like, maybe the, the goal is to just have a nice experience and, and to comfort the children that Mr. Mo is still here and we still can have this time together and they can still experience some of that joy that we feel together. And maybe, you know, maybe that's fine. And, and if they want to send me videos back and they want to, you know, interact with me in that way, in a way that feels good to them. I mean, that, I, I'm so, it's so important to me with the children that, that their relationship feels, um, feels two-sided for them. You know, I don't want to just be a voice off in the ether. I want to be accessible to them because I'm very accessible to them in life. And um, during this time when they're, you know, at home and, and I, I just want to provide that to them. And if, if, if as a byproduct of that, they get to improve their eurythmics a bit, then I'll take it. But I, I guess that's, I think you just need to think about like, what's your goal really here? I mean, I, I think you would just be the, killing yourself to try to think you're going to really teach eurythmics right now. Yeah, and I'll just change, I'll just add on or maybe just uh, curb Anthony's wording a little bit rather than, it's not, it's, it's not that we're not teaching eurythmics in these cases, um, it's that we're able to amplify certain parts of the practice and there are other parts of the practice that, that we might even argue are impossible to do online. Um, but that doesn't make it not Dalcrozian. Um, it just may mean that there are some things that we you know, that are easier to amplify and other things that are harder to amplify. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. It's just yeah. not going to be the full thing. I mean, it's just not. And so, and I think we have to give ourselves permission for that um, to be using these. I mean, obviously, if Heather Gell could have gotten every child in Australia to come to her studio, you know, I assume she would have been happier with that than having to send it out over the airwaves. Um, but we make the decisions that our technology and our uh, situations permit. Um, and, and those kinds of personal connections are, are huge. Um, one of the uh, similar interventions to Stephen's question that, um, that I'm making um, is I'm, uh, I'm absolutely opening up the opportunity to just do one-on-one -on -one little, in my case, Zoom lessons with students. Not full lessons, but five-minute check-in. Um, I have sort of open office hours. My students can sort of select a time and they'll know that I'll be online waiting to say hi to them and, and check in on whatever the last assignment was or whatever their question is. And sometimes the question is, what about this assignment? And sometimes the question is, I'm sad that I'm alone at my home and we just have you know, two minutes of, of teacher student therapy. And that's, and that's really, I think it's both critical. I also think it's quite Dalcrozian. Um, I don't think it's not a part of our practice to have that kind of relationship with each other. Um, so we shouldn't be trying to sort of apologize for that in any way. I think it's really so much of what we do. Um, I, I see Adriana has a hand up. So go for it, Adriana. Okay, I am meeting. So <clears throat> from what I understand from, for, 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 for students who are at an other level, undergraduates or graduate students or even high school students, we can break down the process in three learning phases. One would be uh, providing a video in which you show what it's supposed to be done. Two, step two, to teach a class as if somebody's in front of you using the elements from the video. And three, to check on the students live or via video what they actually learned. That's what I take out from everything what I heard, because I need to, to finish my semester with my graduate and undergraduate students. And <clears throat> that's how I imagine the process. I, and I realize that it's a huge amount of work to do this. Uh, and uh, that's what I understand. The other part for the kids, yes, we are going to be there to create a, a a platform of enjoyment and not overwhelm the parents with recordings and uh, techn technology and whatever they need to do because anyway, they work from home and they are overwhelmed anyways. So I just wanted to point out these three, three, three steps that helpful. one should be for probably. Yep, thank you so much, Adriana. Um, just looping back to Ruth's question about long form versus short, um, I, uh, I think we all might, um, 
weigh the advantages and disadvantages um, of, you know, the, I don't think it has to be one answer, I think is what I would like to say to that. There are, um, if, if Christy, Christy's example of, I'm just gonna teach a class, which is the Heather Gel example, um, where I'm gonna teach a class and then we'll record me doing that class and then people can click back in as they do. I think there's a lot of worth for that. And then doing small modules like Anthony is demonstrating also provides a lot of flexibility and, uh, and it makes it very convenient for people to repeat a section or to sort of check off things, you know, along the way, you know, how many of Mr. Moe's sections did you get through? Oh, I did 20 of them. I did two, you know, and there would be ways for, you know, students to sort of keep track or to sort of angle around or, or for someone to say, could you do a little more of this and less of that? Could we do more canon work? Could we do more echoing work? Could we do more singing things? Um, would be a way with those small things. And it also sort of falls in line with people's, what we think of as people's attention spans these days. I think um, we saw Guy had a hand raised a while yeah. ago. Thank you. Unmute, Guy. Huh. Okay, the space bar trick did not work. Um, I actually have to go, I'm being called into a production meeting. So uh, I'll, I will look forward to continuing the conversation with you all, but thank you so much. Thank you, Guy. We'll hope to get your questions next time. Thank you. Any, anybody else? We have maybe five minutes where we would love to. Yep, Ruth and then Monica. Well, you got to unmute, Ruth. There you Thank go. Thank you. Thank you. This speaks to my point. I'm not a tech person and I I'm, haven't started teaching remotely yet. I'm going to be doing that tomorrow. But I have come across a wonderful program by Gregory Risto called U Theory, yeah. U as in the letter U, that is a wonderful adjunct for, I, I find it so flexible for kids, let's say from third grade on up, uh, it gives them homework to do. Um, I find some of the rhythms, it's very metronomic, um, but I, I think it's a really good program and I recommend it. Um, and just in case anyone does not know Greg Risto, Greg is a, is a serious Dalcrosian, a madly talented um, educator uh, with just big skills. And he's got a whole other part of his life that is a uh, computer programmer, tech guy, yeah. and he's created this platform. And so what I think is really apropos of, of this conversation is that Greg comes from our community. And yeah. so he was setting up a online theory uh, rudiments of theory kind of practice uh, space. Um, he did that with all the knowing of a Dalcros teacher. Um, and so while it's not at all a Dalcros platform, it is heavily influenced by um, this kind of knowing. So yeah, he concentrates a lot on ear training and, and the Dalcros sawfish as well. Um, yeah. And he's, he's at Oberlin now. He's a professor yeah. there. So, Very good. Anyway. And thank you. I have to leave for a two o'clock call. Nice so seeing thank you, you so much for doing this. Hang in there. Yeah. We, we still have another minute or, or three and I can run over if anybody wants to. Um, any other questions? Monica was just scratching her nose. She did not have a question. <laughs> Does someone else have anything else they wanna sort of get going? Or um, specific questions pointing toward next week uh, when we wanna talk about live some, you know, we'll try to double down a little bit more on the different versions of live interaction. Yes, Bethann. All right, another, just speaking again. Um, in the US, do you have any issue with child protection and teaching online? Um, we do. Um, I, I mean, that is, well, so first of all, there's privacy concerns. So anything that would share privacy things. So I don't know what that line would be if a student opts into a Zoom. Um, I don't think, I, I'm assuming that that would be okay because that-, that So that, I just got an email from my tech person at my school that there are privacy issues or like child protection acts where Zoom, like the school is not really supposed to be sending out Zoom links that within the Google Classroom, the, within the school's domain, that's all safe and fine. There you go. But Google Meet is, is working really horribly for me. And so I switched to Zoom because the school was sort of using Zoom. So there's lots of gray area. If I find out anything more from my person at the school, I will pass it on to the group. So um, yeah. one of the things that is definitely um, protected space would be any video of our students performing. 
Um, and so, you know, if, if Anthony were to uh, video his elementary classroom and then try to put that up as an example of the classroom, that would overstep um, without there being permissions from the families. So every one of those families would have to check off on every student's face. And apparently you're not even allowed to do um, fuzzy faces. If your software lets you sort of fuzz out somebody's face, even that I understand is not, is not perfectly legal. Um, but because Anthony's examples were using his own children, then he can give that example. And so that's acceptable. And, the, and I think there is a line between what is in school and what is out of school. And in school, I, I assume means that only people in the school could find it. And so if it was, if you somehow were doing something for school, but it was somehow released to the public and that a public person could find it, then there's, there's definitely a problem there. Um, the, the situation in the, in the UK is um, that probably we will not be allowed to teach um, of the internet. Well, um, and then, then there's a second issue, which is um, what is required versus what is available. And so here in the States, our, at least our public schools, um, we, the, all the public schools are, are strongly encouraging or, sort of, or even mandating that their teachers move things online. But what they can't mandate are the students to participate. And so because it's a public situation and we have no way to guarantee that the students have appropriate technology or appropriate space or any of the things, then everything defaults to enrichment as opposed to curricular requirement. Um, the districts can make the faculty put the um, information, of, make the information available, but they actually can't demand that the students partake. And so we have no idea what's gonna happen when we've had a month or two of missed classes and we have high school juniors, you know, who have to eventually, you know, pass to graduate. Nobody knows that answer right now. Um, if you're in a private school, private schools can mandate that their, their students participate um, and can then use that toward graduation requirements. Uh, other thoughts, Adriana? I think she's just leaving. Say goodbye. It was so nice seeing you, Adriana. Um, I tell you, that's really one of the uh, uh, one of the silver linings of of all of uh, of this worldwide problem um, is that we have a chance to see each other when we wouldn't have had that chance. So it's so nice to um, see people. Stephen, do you have a question? Got to un unmute. Sorry, not used to that. Uh, so I, I wanted to just ask, you may have answered this before. Is there a sort of running document or Google yes. Doc? Um, yep. And it's at the beginning of the chat um, line here. So if you go into our little chat and scroll all the way to the top, um, you'll find Veronica's link. Um, so I'll say more about that. I'm making this Google Doc as a shared depository of this entire platform that we're creating together. So it has the agenda for all the meetings so far and any future meetings. That's where I will put the links to the video that's been recorded. That's where the Zoom link is. And then there's a list of resources at the very bottom that people have suggested. So you can all, it, I have given everyone with the link editing privileges. So use this power wisely. Um, you can all add resources to the bottom of that document. If you don't know how to do the table of contents links, don't worry about it and I'll just fix it later. So everyone, please feel free to add there. Uh, if you also want to email me or Stephen directly, that's also an option, but just know that then it'll take us a little bit longer to get it on that document. And um, I will also send out the link from this recording and also from last week's recording. I'll send those links like via email. If you did not get an email directly from me, then if you could type your email in the chat box right now, then I'll add you to the mailing list because some people forward it to their friends um, and that's, we also really appreciate that. Um, but if you could type your email in here and then I'll just go through and, and pull them all from the chat box and make sure that I've added you to my little mailing list. Like I just have an Excel spreadsheet where I keep all the email addresses. So I promise I won't share your email with other people just <laughs> notifying this group. Um, feel free to forward my emails. Feel free to forward the Google doc to other friends who might be interested. Uh, we ask that you don't put the video recordings anywhere up on social media or website like public websites if we can just keep it internal here um yeah so those are kind of housekeeping things good um Thanks. good 
Um, well, I think we're, um, we want to be respectful of people's time. Um, if anybody has individual things or small, other things that you want to talk about, by all means, stick around. Um, but I think that we will officially um, close our meeting. And then where, um, Veronica, will you just tell us again, when are we meeting next week? Yeah, next week is uh, same time, but a different day. Our day is Monday, March 30th. Monday, March 30th, same time, whatever your time zone is. So, yeah. That's and uh, thank you to David Bewley who pointed out we are in EDT, Eastern Daylight Time, not Eastern Standard Time. Oh. So I will, because he's in Canada and they're like on a different, they, they switch at a different time. So I will be clear about that in the future. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you. And thank you to Veronica for, for helping to keep all of this so well organized. I think you're the best. Um, um, okay. Well, if anybody wants to stick around, I'll not.